talking of parties, uh, then this session is about all about the people that we at WSO2 go to party with all the time. <laughs> so this is our partners. It's all about our partners. So the WSO2 partner program, we have about um, six, 70 partners uh, spread across globally now. Our partners help us spread the word about open source, about WSO2, uh, and take, uh, taking us to new territories uh, based on the expertise and capabilities around that. Um, and, and of course, helping our customers with uh, consulting, training, and implementation, um, and, and making sure the customers are successful in their efforts to in digital transformation and taking them into production. So today we have uh, five very accomplished gentlemen from five of our partner companies. To start with, we have uh, Matteo Borden uh, in the far corner, Hello. who's principal architect at uh, Professia. So Matteo uh, works with uh, customers specifically who are looking to expose uh, their digital assets uh, uh, externally uh, through APIs. Um, so he'll be talking to us a, a bit about um, some experiences he has about around that uh, later on. Um, next we have um, Damien Ingren, who's a consultant with Emoxa. Um, sorry, so I was also wanted to mention, so Matteo, uh, Professia also mainly works in Italy um, and does a lot of work for us in Italy. And then Imoxa, where Damien comes from, um, works in France, um, um, a partner in France. So Damien is a SAO, SOAN uh, uh, integration architect working for Imoxa. Um, next we have Sudarka, Sudarka Jayashankar, who is the CTO and chief architect at Mitra Innovation. Uh, Sudaraka leads a, a relatively large team of engineers uh, uh, back in Sri Lanka working on WSO2, especially uh, um, among other things, there's a WSO2 practice that we have at uh, Mitra Innovation. And Sudaraka leads efforts around uh, customer engagement and um, solutions architecture. Um, and, and Mitra Innovation operates in predominantly in uh, Europe and the APAC region. Um, next we have Rob Blubur, uh, who's a I'm good, yeah. I was practicing. <laughs> um, so Rob is an integration uh, consultant, and he also works on WSO2 training, uh, and does a lot of work around that. And uh, actually, it's multidisciplinary for Rob. Uh, he works on training, he works on uh, consulting, uh, consulting and doing work with customers, and also he spends a lot of time evangelizing around WSO2. Um, and he was telling me, as he's written, he has posted 40 blogs on WSO2 or just over the last year. Um, and next we have Jack Ryder. So Jack Ryder is CTO at Chakrai, uh, company, um, sorry, again, I forgot. So Yenlo, so um, Rob is from Yenlo. Uh, and Yenlo operates um, predominantly in uh, Europe and North America, but uh, looking to go into a global scale, of course, yes. Um, so Jack is CTO from Chakrai. Uh, again, mainly operating in um, Europe and, and South America, yep. and uh, looking to go into Canada and some other countries as well now. Already there. Already there, yes. Um, so how we are going to do this today is, uh, I, I have three specific questions that I'll, we'll be going through uh, with, the, uh, with the panelists, and then we'll open it up for any audience, audience questions and, and open it up for the, into a discussion uh, before you go and party. Um, so the first question is actually around your motivation uh, to engage or to partner with WSO2. Why did you think and, and what was your drive towards engaging or, or you know, becoming a partner with WSO2? And, uh, and what do customers see as a value add that you bring to the table, being a WSO2 partner? Um, start with Matteo. Uh, okay. Yes, he was working. Okay, Pr Professia uh, do scouting of application for our customer. So normally, ca customer give us his requirement is uh, necessary, and uh, sometimes he ask us to identify the correct application that he was uh, able to uh, implement the requirements. So for us, it was uh, uh, natural to become partner uh, about WSU2 uh, because it was like to certify uh, our solution. So when we do a solution to a partner, when we uh, design our architecture, when we identify the product to, to use, uh, then we would like to certify that this uh, 
this uh, application, this architecture, sorry, uh, it is the best for the customer and also the best for WC2. So we use the WC2 technician to uh, understand that the, the architecture that we're doing is uh, the correct one. So as a partner, we can ask to technical people if the architecture is correct. We discuss with when, and so for us, it, it was uh, natural become a partner of uh, uh, of our uh, um, application of our product that we we sell to to, to the customer. Hello. Yeah, for us uh, also it was uh, it was logic to become a partner because uh, with our firm we do mainly uh, high level architecture consultants and uh, and we uh, we work around the uh, service oriented architecture and we also wrote a, a guide around uh, the um, the service uh, oriented architecture. Uh, it's in French, uh, sorry, <laughs> but it was uh, sold uh, uh, seven uh, thousand copies. So we. Um, we're focusing on uh, many kinds of architecture, and we saw in WSO2 a good uh, uh, a good vendor because uh, it was open source, and uh, we, we like uh, the, the open source community. And we we, we saw in uh, WSO2 uh, uh, a strong uh, newcomer and player like seven years ago. Uh, we all we, we so we we worked <coughs> with with him, and. Um, and we, we like to become partner with WC2 because uh, we prefer doing architecture than uh, just uh, seeking clients and uh, and do marketing. So we focus on architecture and we we help WC2 achieve some uh, good uh, solution in their clients. And it's a mutual uh, good relationship. So it's really nice to have such a partner for us. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sharon, for the uh, question. Uh, so back in 2015, Mitra was very small. We had about less than 10 people, the two being in UK and the rest of the guys were in uh, Sri Lanka. Um, so the, our strategy to grow was a uh, partner with uh, uh, a technology company and uh, WSO2 actually gave us the geographical advantage being in Sri Lanka. So uh, we actually uh, partnered with uh, WSO2, started as a community partner. Um, and we actually started building an open source platform called BIM as a service, this is specifically around uh, building construction uh, 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 sector. Uh, and WS2 was kind enough to actually uh, provide us the OEM uh, capability on several different components. Uh, that actually didn't fly well, but what flew was uh, we actually got a lot of exposure to the technology and we mastered it. And uh, today I'm proud to say that we are about 175 people uh, across uh, the globe on different locations and with a large WS2 practice with uh, certified uh, architects and engineers. Um, so the motivation is pretty much that because the, the value that we can bring. Uh, so one of the key things that we bring to the table is the the end-to-end -end capability of WSO2. So we start from uh, the quick start to uh, design, to deploy, and uh, build, and then we go into uh, the support. So we have a dedicated uh, support desk uh, specifically for WSO2 uh, where we handle level one and level two. And then we uh, paired up with WSO2 for the uh, production support at level three. Uh, so that's one of the key things that we bring into the table uh, for our customers. Uh, and also, we have a very unique way of building our engineers uh, with a quick uh, turnaround time, like in about three weeks. We produce uh, a WSO2 engineer just like we produce chicken in a farm. <laughs> um, well, but that, that, that actually works. So that's uh, pretty much. What we do? Where's your farm? <laughs> In Sri Lanka. <laughs> okay, for, for us at Genlo, when we, when we were looking into the product, we basically stumbled on, on, uh, onto the product like uh, I think a lot of you did, just by downloading it, just by looking at it and seeing whether the product performs. And what we found was that it indeed performed. So at one point we said we, we need to, to be partner of this company because the product is well performing. The suite of products in 2011 was quite broad, but the the, what we call the big five, 
uh, four of them were already there. So identity and access management, ESB, API manager, and, and BAM, of course. So, and, and then there is the, the, um, the connection that we have with the management of WS2, but also the people, the engineers. So I, I think I, I emailed Johanna from, from, from documentation and training the most uh, the, together with, uh, with Jackie. So for us, it was quite, uh, uh, quite an easy choice, just based on merit. Not that we, we, we like the logo, we do that, we do like it, but it was really based on merit. And what we bring to the table is, well, of course, a broad portfolio of services that includes training, um, but also best practices. So you don't, um, if you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are many wheels and there must be one wheel that is suited for you. Um, and, and that's very important, but we also do not shy away from being critical. To, to actually get the best solution for the customer. So we might have thought this might be best, but if the customer says, really, then we go into the discussion with the customer and he tries to convince us or we try to uh, convince him or her uh, what the best solution is. So complete services, but also being critical, being a real partner, because partners, um, y it takes two to partner. That's very simple. Hi, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Uh, well, in, in Czech Ray, uh, um, it can of become natural to be uh, a WSO2 partner. When we founded Czech Ray, was an engineer driven company. 100% of the components of the company were engineers. Now we have like 5% over there that are not engineers. Uh, but uh, we wanted to create a, a company that was uh, engineer driven. Most of our background, at least for myself, was coming from the open source arena. Uh, Life Ray, all these projects, we've been really involved. Uh, so we, when we found the Chuck Ray, we said we want to become kind of a, a boutique, something very specialized that we can compete with uh, different companies, but because we are really good experts. So we found, we started looking in, in the market and we found uh, WSO2. At the moment, it was the only open source, complete stack mm -hmm. in the market, and the foundations were there. The, you, you saw that that was going to be a long play, okay? So we started there, that was around 2000, uh, 2011 or something like that. And uh, since then, we've been building a very high expertise, uh, so we, we, we are uh, able to bring to the customer uh, a great uh, amount of experience. We uh, have been able to go end to end in, in another type is like accompany the customer from the beginning to the end. We are able to do uh, training, customized training. We are able to do consultancy, auditing, uh, development. We have a big development center in Seville. Uh, so we have different projects that we are working in there. Uh, and. Uh, W that's the, I would say that that ADN that we have in, in Chagra is what we bring to the table, uh, that expertise as the same of all the partners we have here. To become a partner is something on merit, is something you are building over the time. And I think here is a good example. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So next, I would like to uh, talk about building capacity. Uh, and as an implementation partner, obviously building capacity uh, within within the partner organizations, it's very important for the for for the partner as well, in terms of uh, handling and running running projects, and to be able to build capacity in quick time. And I think Sudhakar started started on this uh, talking about this already. So, uh, not about the chicken farm, but. <laughs> uh, uh, and also for customers, it's very important to know that that uh, um, WSO2 WSO2 skills are widely available. And, and also that there's people who can provide that assistance, uh, uh, and, and especially provide that assistance locally. So, uh, so the question specifically is going to be around what, uh, how, how do you go about building that capacity, and especially uh, from a local context and the con in the countries that you operate in, uh, how do you go about building that capacity? What challenges do you see, and how how do you mitigate those challenges? Um, so, Sudhakar, I might start with you, given that you you already got a, a head start earlier. Okay, so I had to talk about the chicken farm in that case. <laughs> right, okay, so uh, uh, 
We actually work with a lot of W2 engineers. So we produce uh, W2 engineers when I say about the chicken farm. Uh, so what we do is that um, you know getting somebody competent in W2 is not that easy because uh, the the developers that you get day to day is pretty much uh, you know Java developers and .NET developers. Uh, so convert them into a WSO2 developer is not that really easy, given the demand that we have for the projects. Um, so what we did was over the period of time we we acquired certain uh, competencies. So what we did was we actually built something called a WSO2 bootcamp. Uh, so this bootcamp is actually consists of uh, three weeks. Uh, and we were able to produce really quality, high quality engineers through that program. So the main uh, sources for this program is pretty much the WSO2 documentation and WSO2 library. And in library, you get a lot of case studies, uh, on-demand webinars, uh, white papers, and all that. Uh, and uh, of course, some of the blogs from Yen Lo and Chakrai, <laughs> of course, uh, been. Yeah, exactly. It's a collaboration. Yeah, partner collaboration because a lot of good contents that we have found from Yenlo and uh, Chakrai specifically. Um, and uh, on on top of that, uh, we we actually uh, crafted uh, different tracks uh, like ESB with API Manager, ESB with Identity Server, uh, and Message Broker plugged into all the programs. And uh, we built uh, labs, uh, which is Dockerized environments, where WS2 uh, engineers, when they start, they can simply get the Dockerized environment, run it in their PC, and set up the lab for themselves, and then uh, do the entire thing. And uh, end of each session, uh, they're given to uh, integrate two systems, uh, and they have the practical aspects of everything. So by end of the three period, three weeks period, we actually produce a very good uh, WSO2 engineer, and then we validate their skill set by running certain sets. So that's uh, that's basically how we. I mean, it's not a secret or anything. It's like uh, the handpick uh, elements and handpick uh, content from WSO2 library and uh, documentation. Um, in terms of a challenge that we see, uh, is that we work with a lot of millennials. I mean, these guys are really energetic and they want to write code and. You know, sometimes you get a little bored writing WS2 code. It's pretty much working with XML every day. Um, but I think that is being answered with Ballerina because our guys are really excited. And uh, the Mitra teams won Ballerina Hackathon uh, back in Sri Lanka. Uh, and, and I can see that how people are really getting involved with Ballerina and contributing and really embracing it. So that's one way. So Rob, I'll probably go next to you because it's uh, training. Training and evangelizing is directly up your alley, so. Um. Yeah, so, so I'm involved with, with training uh, clients as well as our internal person, uh, personnel. And what I, what I find is that WS2 is like an iceberg. It will not sink your organization, but what you can see, what you can learn in a training is just the tiniest tip of the product. And I don't believe in a sort of pressure cooker environment to get people up and running because there is so much more that you that you need to learn and you just can't do it. I, I, I literally believe that when people come out of two weeks of training, the, circum the circumference of their head has been bigger than they came in because there is so much information that you would like to, to teach them, but people cannot pick it up on the fly. You need to, it's like, it's like good wine. It will get better with age. A good consultant gets better with experience. And, and that experience is by actually doing it, do, being with the client, um, doing the implementations, um, getting all kinds of strange errors and solve them, and having the aha moment, like, I, I, I solved it. So it's, it's an ongoing process, and it's not just the technology skills. Because we want to have the soft skills as well. We want to have the people that can actually talk to the client, can discuss with the client, and give them the best solution. And, and um, uh, like, like my colleague here, I'm, I'm tremendously looking forward to the new product on, on Ballerina because that's going to be um, a, whole new, a whole new environment to, to, yeah, to, to, to sink your teeth in. So it's, 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 it's ongoing. It's, you never stop learning. And the same that's in life, but also with WSO2. Myself. I, you have to talk to Baller about Ballerina? <laughs> No. Uh, so uh, our case is a, a bit different, but it's kind of a, a, a mix on on the same issues. I think everybody faces. 
So you don't get out of the university and you are an uh, integration architect. There's not such a career. That doesn't happen, OK? So in our strategy on, on, on the quality, on, on, on how we get engineers uh, up and running in uh, WSO2 products, uh, we've been, of course, training, training, and training, and training, and training. That's uh, vital, and that's supposed to be not something to do today, something that is all, I still do training. I did my last certification uh, six months ago, again. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is, is kind of uh, hire uh, already senior people, okay? That's our strategy. Uh, but senior people in the sense of not Java developer or senior people that already have experience on integration. So we have uh, Oracle people, we have IBM people, uh, we have some use cases that we steal someone from other companies, okay? And, and we train them, but they already know uh, integration. They already know the arena. They already know the big picture. So they just need to learn um, the part of WSO2. That's when we enter kind of the chicken factory, okay? But uh, we, are, we are trying to get them from, from uh, a different perspective, okay? Hire directly uh, really interesting senior profiles and retrain them on WSO2. That I think is, is for us, is much easier uh, in the sense that you don't have to start with the basics. And usually uh, from there, uh, once they're trained, we usually put them in, in different projects accompanied by other people with already experience in WSO2 projects. And we found that uh, that's the uh, most suitable thing for us to do in, in our strategy as a company on the quality we, we give the customers and yet. Uh, we, we tried uh, to do uh, uh, get really juniors, uh, but uh, I don't know if it's a Spanish thing uh, because we've we done the tests in, in Spain. Uh, it's really difficult to get them up and running with uh, in, in less than six months. It's, for us, it's very difficult. We've been having this discussion uh, um, a lot, and, and we think maybe it's a cultural thing in Sri Lanka. It's maybe easier to get people uh, trained or more focused on the solution, and in Spain is different. We are not sure, and we are testing and evolving our views uh, and collaborating between partners to, to do these things. So that's our struggling in, in uh, bringing new people to WSO2, and that's the way we give a solution to that issue. Thank you. Um, Damien, do you want to talk about uh, Imoxa, how, you, how it's done at Imoxa? Yeah. Uh, so we started uh, providing also training and uh, helping WSO2 uh, uh, create their first training around the ESB like six years ago. And we helped with that. And so in helping with the how to, to create such a material, it helped us to to ask uh, ask ask a good, a good question and to seek how to uh, and, um, search uh, a different way and uh, like like you said each of our mission give us uh, another perspective and how to use the project and so we uh, we catalyze around this and uh, we teach our people and do self training and we really uh, in each mission we we talk with each other and uh, help uh, with uh, we, we, we try to to gain experience for the more that we, we, we use the product so uh, and we also uh, um, uh, look what the other partner does and uh, we try to to, to see uh, we attend the conference and also yeah we do the certification yeah I've just passed the, the certification around the uh, IPA manager <laughs> next, next um, the previous week, so it's nice. Yeah, <laughs> and so, um, so so yeah, that's uh, that's what I that's what you do. Thank you, Matteo. Um. Yeah, for uh, I was very happy that uh, you are try to train <laughs> your colleague uh, and guarantee that during in, in the college there is a possibility to do training. 
uh, sometimes the customer ask uh, us to uh, develop something uh, for uh, yesterday. <laughs> it's not very easy to uh, do training to, to our colleague. So we create internally uh, something like a template. Template for uh, deploy, <coughs> deployment template, uh, deployment for training, uh, sorry, a template for training, a template for understand what WSDU is. And uh, something, a template that uh, mix the requirement to the WSDU applica application. So when a customer asks us, uh, I need to expose an API, oh, okay, this is the correct template. So uh, we are able to answer immediately to, to the customer. So what we have to do in this moment internally, he has to have uh, a knowledge internal, internal knowledge that uh, all our people can use it, can integrate, and can merge with uh, uh, the experience where we retrieve uh, to the project, and also to the answer uh, to the question what to do uh, during the production support and the service support uh, to WC2 team. So internally, we, we use this approach. Uh, we do training when we can, because uh, sometimes we don't have a lot of time to, to train, to dedicate time to training, but uh, um, we have a possibility to have something that is, uh, is collaudate. So we use some templates that we use during the product. We reuse something. We develop internally uh, something that is tested, is secure, and so we produce it to, to, uh, to, our, to our customer. It's a way to, it's very, very easy and quickly to respond to the customer. Because in this moment, uh, our customer asks us to go in production in uh, mm, no more than uh, three weeks. So we would like to expose the API immediately. We need now. Now we need to do open API. Now we need to expose open data. Uh, now we have to expose data because uh, Italian regulation, because uh, the market had asked uh, uh, to have the API opened. So we need immediately. Uh, and we are able to, to respond in, uh, in very, very quick time to, to, to it. Thank you. I think that was very insightful and obviously <coughs> learning. Uh, I, and it was good to hear the <coughs> collaboration happening between partners in terms of, you know, ramping up uh, teams and, and uh, training people. So next, I think we'll go into the right of the core of the this uh, partner. Um, uh, the panel is about engaging for delivery, uh, and how how you approach the customers in terms of how so basically engaging with customers and then engaging with WSO2 as well in terms of making customers successful. And we we'll just go into very quick case studies uh, and, and you know discuss your experience with both with WSO2 and with the customers and basically the interaction that happens in the in the process. Um, so I would start with uh, Matteo. Okay. Um, so Matteo, um, I think we were talking earlier about uh, uh, some of the work you're doing in, a, in, in in the insurance industry uh, in Italy um, around. Um, uh, basically making this uh, industry API ready, uh, mainly due to regulation in the country, right? Yeah. So, uh. Oh, yeah, the, the use case that we would like to, to, you, to give you to represent in this moment is that we, we, we help uh, our customers in Italian insurance to uh, become API ready, so to expose our future as an API. A customer um, called us and who'd like to understand which is the best um, architecture to expose API. He has internally a lot of application, a lot of vertical application. So he has application that it is for, for insurance, another one for marketing, and et cetera, et cetera. And he would like to expose API. <coughs> this API is, is an API that is composing uh, some feature that is internally to, to, to the other application. So the first approach is goes to the customer and understand what is the requirement. We do a list of requirements. After that, we discuss with customer what is the best uh, requirement that we would like to implement. After that, we, would, we, go, uh, we, we, we do a list of application, so we understand how many applications we have and which is the best application, uh, the, sorry, the application that we use for uh, that we have to expose the, the, the API. When we have a list of requirements and the list of application, we design the first uh, uh, level zero architecture. So we design the main block of feature what the architecture must have 
uh, to become a Ready API architecture. After that, we convert the main blocks into uh, product and then in deployment. When we have a three level architecture, we contact directly WSH2 support and we discuss about this kind of architecture. So we decide is, if it is the best one, if we, mm, there is some feature that we don't uh, put inside the architecture, if it's the correct network configuration, what we would like to implement from, uh, from the customer. So it is a continuous, uh, mm, uh, um, we continue to speak with uh, WC2 technician to understand if our, uh, our architecture implementation is the correct one. When we find the correct uh, implementation, we implement it. So we implement the test, the pre-production, and then production um, implementation. So in this moment, the customer, uh, it is in production, is made by the production support, and we use the production support when we have a problem uh, to WSO2 uh, application. Profesia help uh, uh, customer to transform the business requ requirement in technical requirement. Uh, and so when we ask something to uh, WSO2 techni technician, we didn't ask, uh, uh, I need to add new assurance to my customer, but uh, we asked directly, the API with HTTP or HTTPS section did not find or the Beater token is too long, is too short, or the timeout is not correct. So we have a technical problem, and we give to WC2 the technical problem, but the customer gives us the um, <coughs> functional and the business problem. So Professor is a mediator. <laughs> he mediates the, uh, the, the business and the requirement internally into a technical one, and then ask to uh, using the, the production uh, support WC2, and we try to, to, to solve, to solve the, uh, the problem. Thank you. So Damien, I think uh, it's a similar use case uh, that you were talking about was uh, around um, um, exposing APIs and API management uh, in the industrial sector. Do you want to share some thoughts around that? Yeah, yeah so the, the client already had uh, actually uh, the API management and identity server in place, but it was just a single instance. And uh, they they contacted us to to uh, help uh, manage the the whole system and assess the architecture, and so we we assess the architecture and we see that uh, it should be better to have uh, may, maybe like uh, high availability and such, and so we uh, we help them find the good architecture from our previous experience because the API manager can be uh, deployed uh, various ways. So we, we choose to, to deploy it with the high availability. And so we, uh, we, we did that and we documented the whole process. And um, then it's, a, it's an iterative step, you know, as you know. So uh, they come back to us and said, OK, thank you for explaining us uh, how to master the solution and, and to install this way. But they, they found that uh, there is many things to configure in many uh, files. So they, they were telling us if we can do better. So we had a project around uh, dockerization all of the architecture to make them uh, m more uh, efficient to automate the deployment of the architecture in many uh, environments and such. So we, we provide them for a uh, higher uh, level uh, architecture and uh, um, automation. Uh, so that, that's what is good with, uh, to involve partners because they have <coughs> seen many different scenarios and they can provide uh, uh, specific uh, knowledge and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, we, we use the, this to, for DevOps and we will see in uh, the future what we can do with them. It's, it's really an iterative uh, step and we like to transfer the knowledge to our clients, the best way for them to m be able to master the solution. And uh, we will also, like we, I said, provide training and, and that's our view to help our clients to, to, to make them able to do everything. And we, we see uh, that that's a cost and that's uh, Our job is not to, to make our clients uh, need us more. <laughs> our job is to uh, be able to, to clients uh, really uh, master the solution and, uh, and knows how to use it, uh, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely making the client successful at the end yeah. of the day, right? So, 
So, so Darok, I think, um, so uh, Mitra Innovation is involved in, uh, with Travis, Travis Perkins, I think on a, a fairly significant project on a five-year digital transformation program. So I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of experience to share in terms of the uh, uh, engagement with Travis Perkins and WSO2 around that. So. Yeah, definitely, Shaman. Uh, I think uh, people who are sitting in uh, Chris's, Chris Stone here, uh, who heads the integration in uh, Travis Perkins uh, would know that how complex the program is. I mean, this is, is the largest program and the largest client that we have ever involved in, uh, 20,000 employees and then uh, 200 branches uh, and uh, 23 uh, sub-companies. Uh, so the digital transformation program itself is is a uh, connecting all those companies and moving them in into an ERP system. Uh, so as you can imagine, that it's a it's a very very significant uh, integration team. So uh, the 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 load of work is basically that we have uh, four of our teams uh, working in this large uh, integration program. Uh, so the good thing is that uh, the Travis Perkins already had very good practices uh, inbuilt when we actually uh, uh, you know, got engaged with them. Uh, they had a very nice canonical data model uh, where they uh, built it and crafted it very nicely so that uh, other systems can plug into this uh, uh, ecosystem and then expose uh, their APIs to the other systems. And we had a uh, very nice uh, DevOps uh, piece that everything is built uh, uh, according to the DevOps scripts and all that uh, very sophisticated way. Uh, so we were uh, engaged in building a lot of integration. So there are different uh, areas in uh, invoicing tool hire, uh, supply chain and different uh, environments that uh, our teams are working. Uh, it's a good thing is again uh, with the partner collaboration that we work actually with uh, uh, Chakray uh, hand in hand uh, with their teams and our teams together. Uh, so that's where it's actually uh, a lot of the challenges are being you know handled together. Uh, and WS2 being uh, a real great help because uh, I see WS2 UK team constantly uh, being in uh, Travis Perkins site and there are a lot of uh, advice being given. The architectures had been reviewed. Uh, so this is a good example that even a very complex program, uh, if you run it in a proper way uh, with WS2's uh, guidance and all that, then can be something really good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So Rob, I think. Um, um you you have a um, experience in delivering training programs mm -hmm. for our customers and engaging from a training perspective and enabling customers to be able to uh, manage their WSO2 deployments. Mm -hmm. right, so if you want to go into a bit of... Uh, yeah, so basically because two of our clients um, are presenting here in, yeah. uh, at WSO2Con, uh, so Foyt and uh, the Water Authority HHNK, um, <laughs> They can tell it much, much better than, than I can. Um, but I would like to share with you is something that we see and that, that Jack um, talked about a little bit. There is no integration architect study. But when you look at what current students in universities are learning, um, they, when I say rest, I get a sort of a, or soap or XPath. So basically, we, we reached out to the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam saying what we would like to do is to, to inf infuse the curriculum with a bit of WSO2 and, of course, SOAP and REST and APIs because that is the way the world is moving. We've, we've seen this the last one and a half day. It's going to be all APIs. So. I drafted um, um, a sort of a, a lecture. I'm, I'm a guest lecturer at several universities. And they said, oh, yeah, WSO2, Carbon, API Manager, hands-on. That's great. But can you also do um, AWS, um, Docker, Kubernetes, Mesos, uh, Infrastructure as Code, Ansible, uh, Vagrant. Of course, your REST, your SOAP, your XPath, some hands-on with XPath would be nice. Um, and I asked them, how many hours do I have? And they said, um, two. <laughs> so what we, what we try to do is get the students a little bit of knowledge about the technologies that we're going to use. And we're not even talking about events. We're not even talking about streams. We're not even talking about the next gen. And I think that we need to continue to, to teach students that these are the technologies that are actually being used. Of course, they have heard of SQL. They, they've done something with SQL. But there is also something like City, and there is Spark, and there are so many other things. And 
Of course, there is a limited amount of time, but I do think that the university would be well off if they actually get students um, out of the university with knowledge that is current instead of all of the knowledge that we, we, we had. So what we do is we have an Amazon environment uh, created by my, my colleague Dominic, and actually I can just say 40 instances, and the only thing I need is an IP address, um, and the students can use a browser, and we create an API. So I took the documentation from WSO2, took a look what the students would like, and we basically said, well, we want to have something shiny, something nice. So the, the biggest museum in the Netherlands, Rijksmuseum, has 20, 200,000 digital artifacts, like the Night Watch from Rembrandt, a famous painting, that they have an API in front. So what we basically do with the students, we, we get them to the publisher, actually create an API within a time frame of 30 seconds, and it's all click here, click here, click here. And then I do a little bit of explanation why you do something. Unfortunately, um, you, you, you cannot really spend the time that you would, you would like to do. But you, you can see, hey, I've got a picture of the night watch here on, on my screen. It's really great. So that's, that's why how we try to yeah, get the next generation of employees, whether it's from a partner, whether it's from a client, with current knowledge. Sure, and I'm sure, sure the work that you're doing around that will help all partners and all customers, and including us. In terms I'm, of I'm a friendly guy. Yeah, what can yeah. I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, I know uh, Chakri does a lot of work with public sector, and I'm sure it's, it's a different experience when it comes to working with public sector and, and yes. going through regulations. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I need to see that. It's really interesting. And uh, I want to make redundant collaboration is at least uh, with Mitra we've been collaborating for many years and it's been very successful we more than add it's like multiplying uh, in in the sense of of uh, delivery and things like that there has to be a methodology okay we, we already spoke about okay there has, has to be a solution document in place a scope document and things like that but I, I wanted to share uh, a different scenario uh, that happened actually to me. Uh, so, few few months, a year ago, about a year ago, uh, Chakroy built a workshop uh, down uh, south of Spain uh, to present WSO2 solutions because we were building capability there and we wanted. So, suddenly, uh, we invited uh, one government agency and Next day, we found out they were fighting because there wasn't enough space for all the government agencies coming in. It was kind of strange. So we kind of built quite a few people in, in, in the room. And I had an agenda. Kind of today, we have some questions, and we're going to do this, 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 this. So suddenly, when I came in, they looked at me like if I was from WSO2. But actually, I was the head of WSO2 at that moment. And I had all these angry people in the room saying, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and we're having problems here and there. First of all, we, we didn't know all the agencies were using WSO2, because they didn't tell, they don't have support, they don't have nothing, they were all. So, so I said, OK, stop. Let's change the agenda. Let's start answering questions. I have my laptop there. I have this problem here, this doesn't work. Wait, look, pa, 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 you do it this way works next when we end uh, was like a three hour three hour and a half session everybody was so happy suddenly everything <laughs> changed the perception of WSO2 just by having someone with enough expertise to tell them here you solve that problem this way here you have that solve that problem it was identity server API manager uh, ESB, many, many different solutions. And they had problems with all of them. They just needed someone. Since then, we found out they were calling us uh, from each department to do a similar workshop just for them. So tell us how we can focus on this, how we can focus on this. And I've been personally involved in most of those workshops. And 
is, is a big change. So I think what, when we deliver uh, to partners, we deliver that expertise, that way of doing things. Uh, a small change in the beginning of the projects that you take the wrong decision, you might find six months later, you are stuck. You are not taking care about versioning, you're not taking care about this or that, or, and suddenly it works, you're, the integrations you're doing, but you find out yourself a year later you are really stuck. So from there uh, we managed to uh, uh, explain them why support is important, why WSO2 is important, and we are actually building a very good relationship with many uh, agencies in the Spanish government just because we have been able to do it. Uh, as somebody said, WSO2 is just download and zip and you can start working. But as many other comments said before, no one comes out the first day being an integration architect. There are so many things you have to take care about. Methodology, there are methodology, there are not so many different ways of doing these things. You have some, to have some requirement gatherings, as he was saying, you have to build some documentation, you have to agree uh, with the customer some architecture. If something goes out of the standards, go back to WSO2, hey, give me the seal of approval. Uh, maybe in between the projects, three months, every three months, get some architectural review directly from the from WSO2. It makes everyone relax, everything progresses well, and methodology and hard work and collaboration. That's the secret. It's not that difficult. Thank you. Definitely a different experience around, especially working with public sector. And I'm sure you're a celebrity within the yeah. uh, <laughs> Spanish government sector now. You might be Minister of Integration next year. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, we have to talk about that. We'll, we'll work on that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that was very insightful in terms of the experiences uh, our partners have had with WSO2 and our customers. So I would like to open it up to the audience now for any questions or any comments or any discussions around that. Yep. Can someone give a mic, please? Come here. Yeah. Probably it's better. OK. Um, I'm a, from an Italian company, and we have a, a, a little different problem with respect to you. We uh, use uh, uh, WS2 from one year to implement products uh, for our solutions. So we have a, a different uh, way of producing software. Uh, we are working on product and is a bit different from, from project. And we have a, a DevOps methodology. So we have a development department and operation department. We have uh, several hundred uh, uh, customers on, on Italy and abroad. So uh, what do I would like to know with respect to your experience, um, we are looking forward to create a, a, a membership at a, as a partner with WSO2. What could be the uh, value added uh, from our perspective, from uh, guys who produce product instead of project? And uh, from the uh, operations point of view, we have um, the, the need to uh, clustering solution uh, according to different uh, specification given by our customers. So what, sh uh, what could be the support given by WSO2 according to your experience in this uh, environment? Thank you. Well, uh, so in our special case, uh, there are some basics when, when you're building products that you're selling uh, around uh, many, many different customers. Uh, we have some use cases that uh, some customers, they actually uh, use WSO2, want to use WSO2 inside their products, okay, for whatever reason. Uh, I would say there are two key parts on this. First is uh, the automation part, okay? So uh, when you have uh, deployments like in, f in our case is like 4,000 different uh, customers, uh, the automation part and the observ observability, uh, observability uh, side is, is really important. You have to have a really controlled environment, use uh, tools like Docker, we've been talking before, 
uh, all these uh, CI technologies are key. Uh, on the side of uh, support, okay, uh, I don't know exactly your case, but uh, in our case, we go to WSO2 and try to negotiate uh, an agreement for the customer to have their environments fully supported from the beginning. And then in the customers, that actually the customers are using your solution that has embedded uh, WSO2 inside to have a different type of support agreement, okay? Uh, so that's that's our experience in that arena. Um, we've been uh, successfully uh, engaging with this type of solutions. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you, uh, Mitra also has a solution that uh, has uh, WSO2 embedded on it. So it's not actually selling WSO2, it's selling that solution that has. So maybe you can have some uh, talks about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, in Mitra, we have two streams of the company. One is our cloud integration, where we do the system integration and cloud integration. The other side of the company is actually product incubation. So we have a different team who is very skillful of building uh, products. Um, so initially, when we started building products, what we did was like we used WSO2 pretty much uh, in order to bring in, because all these products that we build, I mean, nowadays you can't build a product without an integration. It's always integrating with something and exposing an API. Um, so we initially used WSO2 products, but these people that we work with are pretty much, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs uh, who has uh, probably a startup or something like that. So the challenge that we faced was that the, the production support cost, whether they can actually afford that, because it's, it's, it's a big amount if you calculate it for a, uh, actually not an enterprise, but for a startup guy. Um, so we were trying to get around the problem. So uh, so we usually uh, go for the WS2 cloud option uh, whenever we need to do uh, uh, integration or API, because it's a very lean model. Uh, in terms of uh, the pricing. So you can start with a very uh, small subscription and then you can actually go uh, and and uh, we, we pretty much uh, propose the solution uh, around WSO2 Cloud uh, where you can actually embed that solution into uh, your product that you're building. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we are, I'm really betting on uh, Ballerina because uh, when, it, when that comes out, uh, it is going to be uh, pretty much uh, run as a serverless architecture based on cloud, and it is going to support uh, you know, things like AWS Lambda. It can sit in AWS Lambda. That, I think, is going to support all the product immensely uh, when it comes to all integration. So that's my point of view. Yeah. So WSO2, so in from a, um, if you're talking about um, embedding WSO2 into your products rather than you know the, the services aspect, so uh, we have a, a dedicated OEM program as we call it, um, which is basically we tailor a, a package for that a support package around that based on the volume and the timelines uh, for product rollout. So it's a, it's actually a separate discussion, but uh, there's details on our website that you can find and or obviously get in touch. Uh, we can talk about that. Um, any other questions? I think we probably have time for one more question. Uh. All right. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for that very insightful discussion. Um, I'm sure everyone learned a lot, and I'm sure it's a, 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 a learning experience for other partners here as well, and also for customers who will want to work with partners in the future. It was very interesting to learn about the collaboration, um, we, something we should be seeing much more. Um, so thank you very much again to Professor Imoksa, Mitra, Yenlo, and uh, Chuck Ray. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank all other partners who are here. Uh, there's quite a few other partners gathered here now, um, and even the partners who are not here for helping uh, customers believe in WSO2 and also helping customers be successful in, in, in their projects. Thank you. <laughs>